In 2006, Elon Musk laid out his first master plan. It looks like Legacy Auto is going to follow that master plan, but backwards. Let's take a look. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All, so you can tell my voice is still kind of rough from last week. It actually kind of sounds good on this, you know, it's kind of got that radio voice with a little bit of depth to it and scratchiness. It sounds like I've been smoking for a long time. Anyway, today's video came out of an interview with Financial Times from Volkswagen's CFO recently, just a few days ago actually, as I'm recording this. But in that, he said that Volkswagen is going to be reducing, 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 and focusing more on the premium market and making higher margins. And this my friends is a real watershed moment. So first of all, let's back up and let's take a look at Elon Musk's master plan from August 2nd of 2006, quite a while ago now. At the end of this master plan, he laid out four main bullet points. Number one, build a sports car. Number two, use that money to build an affordable car. Number three, use that money to build an even more affordable car. And number four, while doing above, also provide zero emission electric power generation options. So we'll skip the last part because that doesn't really have to do with today's topic. But the three are basically build a really expensive, you know, kind of toy car or something like that. You know, you can think about it as a car for people who don't need the car, they just want it for fun. You use the money from that to build a more mass, and by the way, that was the Roadster, of course. You use that money to then produce a more mass market car, which is more, you know, mainstream, where more and more people can afford that car. That would be the Model S, and then eventually the Model X sedan and, and SUV. And those, of course, are still rather expensive cars, but as opposed to the Roadster, which was a two-seater and, you know, really had... <laughs> there wasn't a lot of use for, uh, for it aside from just the fun of having an electric car that could zip around and everything, right? But the Model S and especially the Model X are extremely practical cars. While they're really fast, they have the ability to seat five or six people depending on which car you get. And you know, they're, they're perfectly reasonable cars to own as your primary or only car for yourself or your family. And then the third step in the master plan was to use the money from that and build even more affordable mainstream mass market cars, which would be the Model 3 and the Model Y. So obviously that has all come to pass over time. And of course he's got a master plan part two out and he's working on a master plan part three. So the intriguing part comes now when we look at Volkswagen and a bunch of other legacy auto manufacturers and what they're talking about doing. From the Financial Times article, which unfortunately is behind a paywall, but anyway, I'll leave a link in the description if you want to go take a look. CFO Arno Antlitz, and I hope I pronounced that somewhat close to right, said, quote, the key target is not growth. We are more focused on quality and on margins rather than on volume and market share. He then said that they would reduce their approximately 100 models in Europe to about 40 models by the end of the decade. And as Financial Times said, Volkswagen's new strategy is a sign of profound changes in the wider auto sector, which for decades has attempted to increase profits by selling more cars each year, even if doing so required heavy discounting. So for the past, you know, 50 years at least, for as long as I can remember, Automobile manufacturers were always about market share. It's like, how much market share can I get? How much market share can I get? If I have to discount cars and sell at close to a loss or very low margins and make up the amount of money on service and on other features, so be it. We just want as big a market share as possible. Now we're seeing Volkswagen here specifically, but other auto manufacturers also are rumbling about this. They're talking about reducing the number of models, reducing what they're selling, reducing low margin vehicles, and focusing more on premium vehicles. If we think back to what Elon Musk said in his master plan, it was release a very expensive kind of toy niche market car use that to release a more mainstream market car, use that money to produce an even more mainstream car, right? So what he was doing was going like small market, high profits, to bigger market with less profits, but still really good profits, to bigger market with less profits, but very, very high margins. Now they still have outrageous profits, but when you're making 30% on a $50,000 car, you're obviously not making as much money as you are if you're making 30% on an $80,000 car. So anyway, you know, even if they're making the exact same percentage margins, they're not making as much money on an inexpensive car, but they're selling a lot more of those cars. So what we're seeing is an inverted thing happening right now. We're seeing legacy auto 
Auto saying, oh, what we're going to do is take the lack of money we have from all of these mass market cars and we're going to strip those out and we're going to move to more upscale, higher profit margin cars. And then I could see the third stage would be we move from these mid-market higher margin cars to very niche cars that are very expensive but make really high profit margins. And that, my friends, is pretty profound because it's doing exactly the opposite of what Tesla is doing, right? They're growing like this and getting bigger. The other auto manufacturers are talking about shrinking and becoming profitable in a more niche market. That is really, really profound. And I don't know how to overstate that. It's like, wow, we are suddenly seeing, I, I was said in the last video that I did with my wife with misinformation, and you can check that one out here if you haven't seen it yet. I said that we are actually going to look back at the 2020s as the largest technological change decade pretty much that existed without it being a wartime environment. So again, hopefully it won't be a wartime environment, but without that, what we're going to see is Tesla and SpaceX and you know Google and a bunch of other companies are changing the world beyond what we can even recognize as we watch it. <laughs> it's a really profoundly important decade that we're going through right now. But anyway, what we're seeing is that Tesla, while they're expanding, the rest of the auto market is contracting and trying to get rid of models that are not getting them immediate profits. Which of course goes to show that the old model was completely broken. You don't want to sell cars at basically a loss and make it up in volume. That's just kind of silly. That was a broken model. It was ripe for disruption. Tesla's come in and disrupted it and you can see the results right now. So anyway, what are the consequences of this? Well, the near-term consequence is actually going to be, I think, some pain for the common person. Because what's going to happen is, if all of these companies say we you know, just have to cut bait and run, if they say we need to get rid of these low profit margin vehicles, that is the vehicles that the middle class to you know, lower middle class, people who are you know, struggling to make ends meet and need to have a car with a relatively low sticker price, they're going to suffer in the short term because there's not going to be a lot of choices in the lower price range bracket. Now, of course, what could happen as a major consequence of this is you could see Chinese manufacturers coming into Europe and the United States and kind of flooding the market at the low end, sort of like what the Japanese did previously. Because they have lower manufacturing costs and if there is a dearth of cars in the range where you know the common person can't afford the sticker price of these cars, they could fill that margin up probably with EV vehicles, right? So that is only going to accelerate the change even more. So that's a really interesting near-term consequence. The second consequence, of course, is that Tesla is just going to keep eating everybody else's lunch, at least in the kind of higher margin areas, right? They're going to keep growing their market share and growing it. And, you know, maybe eventually they'll release a reduced cost car somewhere in the $30,000 range. But hold on to that thought for just a second because there's actually bigger consequences and bigger disruptions going on. But then the third short to medium term consequence is that Volkswagen, Toyota, GM, Ford, etc., are either going out of business or going to become niche car players. They're going to reduce their market and try to find a profitable sub-segment. You know, maybe Ford will become just a, a truck manufacturer and make trucks for work or for pleasure or something, and probably again move to BEVs and things. So if they can do that as fast as possible. Uh, you know, in some ways, I now actually hope that GM goes out of business. If you haven't watched Connecting the Dots three part series on GM selling America, you really, really should because I I'm so angry at GM right now that I actually hope that they go out of business. It's just, it's that bad what they've done. So anyway, definitely take a look at that when you have a chance. So anyway, as per usual, we have the lower to middle class is going to feel pain in the short term. That really sucks. Legacy Auto is going to shrink and try to fit into more niche markets that are more profitable. And Tesla is just going to expand along with Chinese auto manufacturers that are going to be pouring cars into the US and Europe in the next five or six years. So I think those are the short term things. But the thing where I said, hold on to your hats for a second about Tesla releasing a cheaper model car is, of course, that the robo taxi specific car is going to be coming out from Tesla very, very soon. And if you haven't seen my episode on that, you should definitely check that one out. And the robo taxi is the ultimate disruptor because if it gets good enough and it's widespread enough, you don't need a car anymore. So all of this other stuff becomes irrelevant, right? You can save a lot of money if you can have a robo taxi that you can you know call up on demand as quickly as you want and get it and go wherever you need to go and do whatever you need to do and bring it back home and you don't have to house the car you don't have to insure the car you don't have to pay for charging and things and if it costs less per mile to use that service than it does to actually drive your own vehicle then 
everything's off the table because again, there will be a segment of the market that will want to own their own cars, especially in the United States. But there will also be a really big segment of the market that will say, hey, I don't have the money to do it. People already take Uber, even though it's more expensive per mile to drive because they can't pay for the sticker price of a car. They can't afford to get into a car. And even for more middle-class people who can easily afford a couple of cars, you could cut them down, right? We have two cars that we own. We could easily cut down to one car, use the robo-taxi. I could just go to work every day on the robo-taxi and you know, my wife could use the other car if she wanted to. We could keep it for road trips. We would put a lot less miles on that car so it would cost a lot less. So you know, that even if you kept one car, you could get rid of a, a multiple car household. So all of that kind of stuff is going to have a major, major impact. Again, assuming that Tesla solves the whole full self-driving thing, which I think they will. But you know, once that happens, all bets are off. I think Tesla and whoever else gets their first or very, very close to first is going to completely win the game at that point. So again, in short, what we're seeing is legacy automotive following Tesla's model exactly backwards, going from volume to smaller volume to I'm predicting eventually really, really small volume and high profit margin niche cars. In the meantime, Tesla and potentially a lot of Chinese auto manufacturers are taking that market share away of course, we've got the middle class is going to suffer because there won't be as many choices at low price points just yet. There'll be a gap. <laughs> It'll happen eventually. But like I said, I think right around the time that we could get really inexpensive cars, the robo taxi is going to be available and that's going to completely blow up everything. If you can't afford a car now, it's gonna be a lot cheaper to take a robo taxi. If you can afford a car now, but it's painful to own the car because it costs a lot of money, you're gonna to want to replace at least one of your cars with a robo taxi, and that's going to have massive effects. All right, I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it fun and thought provoking. I would love to know what you think in the comments. In the meantime, please do like the video if you enjoyed it because that's what tells YouTube to let other people know about the video and consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you all so much. We're actually kind of collaborating on a video that I'm going to release later this week. So I'm super excited about that. So keep an eye out. And of course, look in the description for the link if you want to join the team. And if you're interested in a whole bunch of really cool merch, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. We have TeslaBot t-shirts, the Tesla meme t-shirt, success is a possible outcome, 4680 battery cells. All of that stuff is on t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, and on and on. So check it out. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Thank you. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how going shopping for a solar roof, a power wall, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.